Hey guys, I hope all is well. Thank you for joining me for this Truth Talk episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the music industry's sinister secrets. Let's get right into it. For many inspiring artists, getting their foot in the door of the music industry is probably one of the most hardest things to accomplish. Just about all upcoming artists dream about getting signed to a record label, becoming superstars, and making millions of dollars. Upcoming artists spend years of their lives working on their music, hoping that one day they can get signed to a record label. For the lucky few who happen to get that record deal, it doesn't take long for them to realize it wasn't all what they expected. The music industry isn't at all what it appears. From the outside looking in, the music industry appears almost as this fantasy life that very few get to live. Riches, fame, and power are all associated with making it in the music industry. What most people don't know, it's that it's all a facade. Most artists sign terrible deals and usually don't make nearly as much money as they would have the world believe. The reason most artists act rich is because it's a part of the image that needs to be sold to fans. Just one of the manipulation tactics used by the music industry to sell a lifestyle. The music business is not about music, but about making money off of music. Most people that are in the industry are in it for money and are willing to do just about anything for it. This is why we see time and time again artists getting taken advantage of. Being signed to devious record deals that put only 8% of their royalties into their pockets while the labels keep the other 92% for themselves. For every dollar most artists make, the artist gets to keep 8 cents of it while the label keeps the other 92 cents for themselves. For most artists, just being offered a record deal is a dream come true, so they would sign anything a record label would offer. This is exactly what the record label is expecting and taking advantage of. What most people don't realize is when an artist is being offered a record deal, it's because the record label saw profitability in that artist. They know soon that that artist will be making a lot of money, and they want a piece of that. Well, they want most of that. Don't get me wrong, the labels do help the artist see success much faster, but at what cost? The music business is set up so that the music executives who prefer to stay behind the scenes make most of the money made by the music, while the artists only get the crumbs. If you want a full breakdown on how record deals work, you might want to check out my video on the truth about record labels. I actually spoke to an entertainment lawyer recently who worked with some big names in the industry. The lawyer basically told me that my record label video is pretty accurate, but he insisted that most deals nowadays are signed at around 12% for the artists. I don't believe an artist only making 12% of the money their music makes is fair, especially since it's their talent and hard work that is making all of that money. In most cases, when an artist signs a deal and gets that advance check, that is the last check that they'll ever see from the record label. As that signing advance the label gives the artist puts them in debt with the label and assures that unless the artist sells millions of copies, they won't ever be able to repay them. In most cases, the record label stay with full ownership of the artist's royalties even after they pass. For example, we spoke about PNB Rock passing and I noticed that many people were spreading misinformation online when it came to PNB Rock's ownership of his catalog. People on TikTok and Instagram were saying that PNB Rock owned all of his masters when he passed and that his family was going to make the money off of all those streams. Sadly, this isn't true. I wish it was, but it's not. Most of all of PNB Rock's catalog, especially his early hits, unfortunately belonged to Atlantic Records. Even though PNB Rock was dropped by Atlantic, the label kept ownership of all the songs PNB recorded while being signed to Atlantic. Only the music that PNB Rock created after he was independent, which wasn't much, is what his family is going to be receiving the royalties for. PNB Rock also talked about his unfair deal on Academics' podcast. Why are you independent? Pretty much because I wasn't making money like off my music like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like the deal that I had, it was just like a a beginner's deal. You know what I'm saying? And when we was time to renegotiate, it was like... I was on my last two albums. It was like we was at the stalemate. I was getting a little money. I ain't gonna say they wasn't giving me no money, but it was like the money that I I was generating. You know what I'm saying? The way they was kicking it to me, I was like, I was like not doing enough. But when I started looking at the numbers and all of that, the money that you can generate off these type of numbers, I'm like, hold up. Like, yeah, I'm really out here putting up big numbers. Yeah, yeah. So once I started figuring that out and I started getting a little smarter, it was probably like 19, 20, 20. I started digging into yeah. it. And it was just like, all right, man, we. We're going to come to this mutual agreement because we definitely understand how you feel. But it's generating all this money. But how am I still not recouping it? And figured out the type of deal that I was in. I was like, damn, so I'm yeah, thinking. Some deals are pretty much on recoup. Like, like, you ain't going to be able to recoup if you had a 15% recoup rate. Yeah, if you had a 15% recoup. royalty rate, like, like, it's going to take a while. Everything but- get taken out of your 15%. That's nine times out of 10. As eight. you heard for yourself, PNB Rock admits he left Atlantic because they weren't paying him any of the money he earned from his streams. He explains how the labels use sinister techniques to rob the artists. 
When an artist signs a record deal, they become property of that label and are used as nothing more than cash cows. While people were spreading misinformation, people were streaming PNB Rock's songs, thinking that the money would go to his family, but instead, it was going to the pockets of the rich executives that live like gods off the back of these artists. The reason most talented independent artists don't make it is because of the lack of money and connections. Having great music is only 10% of what is needed to make it in the industry. So much more comes into play. You need to have deep pockets for marketing and you need to have connections to get the artists in the right places. I made a full video on how to make it as an independent artist over on my second channel. If you want to check that out, the link for the second channel is in the description. Most, and I'll even go as far to say as all big music careers are bought and not organically grown. Most music careers are paid for by the record labels. The record labels will find sneaky ways to pay radio stations to play the artist's music. They now also pay the biggest streaming sites to put the artist's songs on the biggest playlist high on the list. The record labels are paying for the artist's song to take off. This is one of the industry's most sinister secrets. The record label forces their songs onto the masses whether the masses wants to hear it or not. They make sure the song is everywhere, hoping it gets stuck in the minds of people after they hear it over and over everywhere they go. Hasn't this happened to you before, where you don't like a specific hit song that is being played everywhere, but after hearing it hundreds of times, you start to know the lyrics and unwillingly sing along to it? This is the label's plan. They pay for the song to get stuck in your head, forcing you to like it. After hearing the song hundreds of times, it doesn't even matter if you like the song or not because you already know it and it's stuck in your head, convincing you that you like the song. One rapper who had a very successful hit song actually came out and exposed the industry for their dirty tactics. The rapper Chameleonaire spoke about his experience in the music industry after releasing his hit song Riding in 2005. The song was a mega hit and was everywhere, but according to Chameleonaire, he had to pay a lot of money to make the song into a hit. He mentioned out of his own mouth how record labels still use payola. I got into the music industry and thought that when you, you know, have a song that's number one, that it just goes magically because your song's good. It's paid. Like, Payola is not supposed to be like a thing, but it, it's real. Like I had to pay a lot of money to get my record to number one. And I started looking at the music industry differently. I started As you heard for yourself, Chameleon Air admits that in order to make his song a hit, he had to spend a lot of money. Even though paying the radio stations is illegal and is called payola, the labels found an alternative way to get this done. The label cut checks to radio stations for commercial ad space, but in reality, it's just a way to legally pay the radio station to play their artists' songs. Something else Chameleon Air spoke about was how the record labels steal money from artists without artists even noticing. The industry is designed to rip off an artist. I believe that when check gets handed to an artist, the check is normally not right. Nelly told me, you know, you got to learn how to do the thing called an audit. And I was like, what's that? <laughs> and then he was like, man, you got to get a lawyer. And so I searched, I found Jay-Z's auditor. And then this guy went and said, I'll do it. I'm going to charge you. I'm going to take a piece. And I was like, okay. So he goes and he finds over $600,000 that label hid for me. I was like, wait a second. Is this the way it always is? He's like, you got to keep on doing this. So I realized all my peers didn't know this. So I realized all the guys weren't thinking like that. The way I got off of Universal and they didn't want to let me go is I told them, if you don't let me go, I'm going to go teach all these guys on the label how to do an audit. And they let me go because of that. They didn't want to pay all that money. As you heard for yourself, Chameleon Air states that the record labels were trying to steal over $600,000 from him and he wouldn't have known if he didn't hire someone to look over the books. He even states that he wanted off the label, but the label wouldn't allow it. So he threatened the label by telling them that if he's not released from his deal, he would tell all the artists he knew to hire someone to look over their books as well. This made the labels panic and they released Chameleon Air from his deal, knowing that if Chameleon Air exposed this, they would owe so many artists so much money. I am surprised that they just let him go and didn't just get rid of him. Imagine just how many artists have been robbed or are being robbed at this very moment. While they're enslaved to their deals being overworked and used to push an agenda, they're also being robbed. This alone should let you know how sinister the record labels are. They would do anything to keep their dirty tactics from getting out. We saw Michael Jackson pay the ultimate price for trying to stand up to the industry for his personal reasons. Michael was tired of being robbed and started calling out the labels, calling Tony Mottola the devil. The labels didn't like that and a short time later, Michael was no longer a problem for them. These executives have the power and money that would make getting rid of an artist a walk in the park. We also have spoken about how the record labels open life insurance policies on their artists. For the longest, record labels have put life insurance policies into record deals themselves. 
Once these artists sign a deal, they give permission to the label to open life insurance policies on the artist, with the label being the beneficiary. Like I've said multiple times on this channel, this often makes some of these artists worth more gone than they are when they were alive, especially after the label knows that once an artist passes, their streams take off. We saw this with the rapper Juice World, who passed right during the peak of his career. The label more than likely collected millions of dollars off Juice World's policy and then made even more millions off his unreleased music that they owned. This is why the label have put out project after project as they're making most of all the money that is made off of it. The labels take advantage of the artist and the fans, knowing that the fans will play the artist's music in order to honor them, making the labels boatloads of money. There's a reason why the industry is ran the way it is. It's an industry ran by the Masonic Order. This is why I created Truth Records, a label made by us, for us. A label that doesn't need a big major label backing it. A label that doesn't have an agenda, nor is trying to misguide the masses. A label that isn't going to use an artist as a cash cow and rob them. For those that ask, how would Truth Records succeed? It will succeed because we're going to support it and build it up together. The industry is evil because of the people that run it. They don't care about music, they care about money and the Masonic agenda. Another rapper who spoke about being robbed by the industry was no other than Lazy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. He was saying that you guys were more famous than you had money. Was that the case at this time? That's, that's been the case our whole career, really. We had, right. to our, we had to fight for our money the whole time. When Thuggish Ruggish Bone came out, we were still riding the bus in Cleveland. Like, so we had already been famous. famous, like on the box. We was on the box every day, like we did. So we was way more famous than we had money. And to this day, I believe we are because we done generated over a billion dollars for certain companies. You know what I mean? But we ain't get to, we ain't get a chance to see it like that. Like, you know, you know how they did artists, man. The first deal we signed was 12 points. 12 points is equivalent to 12% out of 100. Split that five ways and you know, they give you big ass advances. Oh, I'm gonna give you a million dollar advance and you know, I'm gonna shoot you a, a video, I'm gonna do this, to only to put you in debt all that money, you know what I'm saying? So the record industry was designed to keep control over the artists. You know what I'm saying? As you heard for yourself, Lazy Bone admits that the labels were robbing them as well and that they had to fight for their money. This is what the industry is. This is what artists are selling their souls left and right for, just to get robbed by the record labels. Only a few of the many artists that make it truly leave the industry rich, but at the end of it all, it cost them everything, including their soul. For those upcoming artists that watch the channel, I advise you to try to make it independently or sign to an independent label that has no ties to the major labels and has no agenda. Even though they might not be able to get you to the level of Drake, they might help you get to the next level without selling your soul. Like I always say, we must remember that every day we wake up, our souls are at stake. And we also must remember to help those who can't see the truth, find the truth. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I just wanted to give a special shout out to the Truth Movement members. I truly appreciate every single one of you. If you would like to further support the channel, join the Truth Movement, or you can join me on Patreon where I drop exclusive videos monthly. The link would be in the description. Another way you can further support the channel is by checking out the Truthfist store and seeing if you find anything you like. Every purchase you make helps with the funding of Truth Records. The link to the Truthfist store is also in the description. Also, please leave a comment on your thoughts on this video and on any future topics you would like to see me cover on my channel. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified of future videos. If you like this video, please leave a like as it helps other people find these videos. You can also find me on TikTok and Instagram and follow me there. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.